Man at the door who we've not seen before. Who is this man at the door who we've not seen before? Who is come to inquire dressed in such strange attire? Signor Ferraro. Hey, indie game fans. May 2019 started off pretty slowly but really ramped things up in the last week of the month to the extent that I really had quite a long list of interesting games but as always, let's begin with some quick picks worth checking out. The fantastic introduction to this video was brought to you by Astrologaster, a choice-based narrative game where you play as a purveyor of medical astrology, using the stars to guide and advise your patients on everything from love to business. The writing is fantastic, the pop-up papercraft aesthetics very well done, and of course, the fantastic singing introductions as shown. Some of you may be surprised that Gato Roboto doesn't quite make the top 5 of the month, but that just means that May 2019 overall was pretty strong. A Metroid-inspired action platformer where you play as a cat both in and out of a mech suit, the stylish choice of the monochrome really shifts the focus to the quality of the gameplay, which looks awesome. Water's cold. It's a fjord. You're not going swimming. Boo. You're such a wet blanket, teddy bear. You know I don't like it when you call me- Edward! Edward Charles Harden! So, do you think we'll find your Betty in- Uh, what did you call this village? Gravewick? Grovik. She's there. How can you know for sure? I just do. Draugon is a first-person mystery game from the makers of Dreamfall chapters, and the pedigree really does carry over into this game. Set in 1920s Norway, explore this beautiful world as you look for your missing sister. There are some psychological horror elements as Edward, the main character, experiences fluctuations in his mental state, so there's a whole thing of can I trust what I see. Druidstone, the secret of the Menhir Forest, on the surface looks very much like Fantasy XCOM due to the UI, and while in some ways it is, this has more of a strategic, almost puzzle game-like quality to it. From some of the original developers of The Legend of Grimrock, there seems to be quite a morose tale behind the team, since the original team appears to have broken up and gone on to other projects, this being one of them. Swag and Sorcery is a management game which is partially attributed to the developers of Punch Club and Graveyard Keeper, where you have to train your heroes, send them on expeditions, and build up your town while protecting the kingdom from threats both external and within. While it is rather grindy, almost to the extent of an idle game, this is totally my type of game which I had a great time with. There's a whole fashion competition aspect, hence Swag and Sorcery, so neat little game. Moving on, here are the top 5 best indie games for May 2019. American Fugitive, perhaps most reductively, has been described as the what-if scenario if GTA had continued to go in the top-down direction rather than the leap into the third person behind the back perspective.
playing as Will Riley, was framed for his father's murder, he manages to escape prison and must now establish links to the criminal underworld to uncover the conspiracy, all while avoiding the police. While it seems very self-serious, there's wacky stuff that you can do as well, such as changing into an old lady's dress in order to lower your wanted level, so it's that sort of open world hijinks. Descenders hit 1.0 in May, and it's a procedurally generated, light, extreme, downhill biking game with a tremendous sense of speed and a whole lot of style. Okay. Now you may be thinking, Another game jumping on the roguelite bandwagon when it has no business doing so, but this, in fact, is very much so. There's a whole campaign thing that allows you to choose your path through the levels, there are different biomes and associated hazards, and even a lives system which you do lose when you crash horribly. Perhaps most interestingly is that there are also boss jumps in the levels, which are massive jumps as expected, which are just awesome to execute. Metronom is the most mechanically simple game on this list and I initially was not too impressed by it visually, but boy oh boy, things quickly changed. A time-based action puzzle game where the level walks on the beat, the electronic soundtrack is freaking awesome, and nailing the level feels really good. Itself describes as a hypnotic video game about music, geometry, and flow, and it did really get me in the trance. Must play for rhythm game fans, but also for people who like awesome things. Welcome to Shakedown Hawaii. V Blank Entertainment's latest open world adventure. Build a legitimate corporation by completing open world missions, acquiring businesses, sabotaging competitors, rezoning land, and shaking down shops for protection money. Shakedown Hawaii is, surprisingly, the second old school top down GTA like game in this list, but has the advantage of awesome pixel art, which I love. The writing in this is top notch parodying big companies and modern business practices in what seems to be 1980s Hawaii and it's a strange, otherworldly mix of technology which is pretty interesting to see the parallels, playing as mainly an aging CEO who first gets angry about being ripped off for paying the same price by getting a bottle of drink that was half the size it used to be, he then realizes that he can do the same and overcharge others as well and it is this sort of commentary on modern day capitalism that is quite witty fantastic action and even a management strategy level where you can purchase the local businesses either legitimately or through, well, shakedowns and violence. Surprise, book face! Do try not to die while action items remain unticked. Gotcha. 
client expired. Void Bastards is a beautifully rendered roguelite first-person shooter from the development director of Bioshock and System Shock 2 Gone Indie, and has you in the shoes of the eponymous Void Bastards, essentially prisoners being assigned to missions to collect parts for reasons. Come in so I can give you a hug. The nice thing in this is that while it is a run-based group light, dying does not reset everything so certain items and collectibles do persist, enabling most to at least complete the game if you stick with it. Interesting enemies, fun and frustrating modifiers, and excellent emergent gameplay gives this the number one spot of the month. For more of the best indie games, do check out the previous video or click on the recommended playlist and I will see you after the jump.